Hello and welcome to lecture 9 in electrochemistry. Today we're going to be looking at redox titration. Of course these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. They form the basis for the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. Hopefully you're referring back to this page from time to time to get a sense of how your progress is coming. Um, we should be familiar with titration labs from acid-base analysis. Acid-base analysis of grade 11. Um, Titration is a technique involving the progressive addition of one reagent, which we call the titrant, to another, uh, referred to as the sample, until the system reaches the equivalence point. We use the known concentration of one reagent, either the acid or the base, to determine the unknown concentration of the other. Um, this occurs when chem chemically equivalent amounts of each species have reacted, and neither is present in excess. In other words, moles of one reactant balance with moles of the other reactant according to their stoichiometry. Um, we observe equivalence indirectly uh, through some empirical observation, such as a color change at an endpoint, a pH change, or even a change in conductivity. An indicator is uh, a class of chemicals that goes through a color change, an endpoint that is, and it's used to determine equivalence point. The endpoint approximates the equivalence point, so when you reach the endpoint, you know you're at equivalence. Certain oxidizing agents are known for the dramatic color change at their endpoint when they move from their reduced to their oxidized states. And because of that, we're able to titrate redox systems using one of these oxidizers. Here's an example question. We're going to uh, complete the following analysis to determine the concentration of the permanganate ion. Uh, in an acidic tin 2 chloride solution. So these are your experimental results. You see we're titrating 10.00 milliliters of acidic 0.500 mole per liter tin 2 chloride with potassium permanganate. And we've run four trials and we've come up with four experimental results. You'll not notice that the first result for the volume of the permanganate is at variance to the other three results. The other three results are closely bunched and they average 16.8 milliliters. But this first trial is a little, almost three milliliters higher, uh, and you'll see that the endpoint was much darker than the, the, the next three. Typically, we're looking for a light pink endpoint with permanganate. So we would discard this first result and only do the, the calculations for concentration based upon the next three trials. There was an overshoot in the first trial. The first step then is to determine the nature of the redox reaction taking place. So uh, again, uh, as we've done before, we list all species present in solution. And uh, I've sort of short-circuited this. My, I should have listed all oxidizers and all reducers, but I, I skipped that step and I went straight to the strongest oxidizer, which is the acidified permanganate, and the strongest reducer, which is the tin 2 ion. And then we write the redox half reaction and the ox the ox oxidation half reaction. The reduction half reaction is the permanganate. Uh, the oxidation half reaction is the tin 2 ion. Um, uh, you'll notice I got these out of the data booklet, although again the oxidation half reaction had to be flipped because they're all written as reductions in the data booklet. And we have to use multipliers, multiplying the reduction by 2 and the oxidation by 5 to balance electrons, and that looks like this. 10 electrons going into the reduction, 10 electrons coming out of the oxidation. So those cancel, and here's our overall redox reaction. And we did that work so we can come up with the stoichiometry between the tin 2 ion and the permanganate. And it's five tin 2 ions reacting with two permanganate ions. We'll need that ratio to do our titration calculations on concentration. So the first titrate, and I'm just making a comment here, that the first of the four uh, trials seems to have overshot. So we're going to discount that results and leave an average volume of 16.8 mL of permanganate solution used in the next three trials to titrate the tin 2 ion. And again, the end point here is represented by a, a light pink color production. The stoichiometry uh, for the concentration calculation is very similar to acid-based neutralization calculations. It looks like this. So we start with the concentrate, or rather, we start with the volume of the tin 2 ion. We were given it at 10.00 milliliters. We use a conversion factor to get out of milliliters and into liters. And we multiply by the concentration of the tin 2 ion, which is the 0.500 moles per liters we were given. So this first piece here is C times V for the tin. 
C times V for the tin 2I, and of course is moles of tin 2I. We multiply that by the molar ratio, 2 moles of permanganate ion to 5 moles of tin 2, and that gets us into moles of permanganate. And then we multiply by 1 over the volume of the permanganate. And again, three trials were used had, had an average volume of 16.8 milliliters. Of course, we have to get out of milliliters and into liters, so we use another conversion factor. On this occasion, milliliters on top and one liter on the bottom. In the end, we get a molar concentration per manganate ion of 0 0.1190476 moles per liter, and employing significant digits, 0 0.119 moles per liter. There's a common lab in this course where we determine the molar concentration and then the percent concentration of hydrogen peroxide in a commercial product. Essentially, we're testing to see if the, if the vendor is uh, watering down the peroxide, for lack of a better expression. Um, we, we do so by titrating it with this permanganate ion, since, again, the permanganate ion is an extremely strong oxidizer, and it reacts to completion in an acidic solution. It's also self-indicating, as we've seen, the first appearance of a light pink tinge to the sample is the endpoint, and that indicates a very slight excess permanganate ion. It's a troublesome titrant, though. Um, its concentration cannot be accurately known for long because the permanganate ion in acidic environment is very highly reactive. Um, uh, to use it, we have to uh, prepare the reagent uh, on the morning of the lab and then determine its concentra concentration by standardizing it with a, what's called a primary standard. And we say that here because of the reactivity of the permanganate we have to prepare it on the morning of the lab and then determine its concentration by sort of a part one initial titration with the primary standard. And here's, here we're, we're cautioning you to prepare the permanganate uh, sort of within 24 hours of the lab, but I would strongly recommend it that you, that you prepare it on the morning of the lab. Um, our, first, our primary standard then is what's called uh, an iron 2 standard. The full name of the iron complex is iron 2, excuse me, I lost my mouse. There it is, iron 2 ammonia sulfate hexahydrate. Here's the formula. Um, and its, it's concentration is stable. So we prepare this material uh, to a known concentration and then we titrate it against the permanganate. And then once we know the concentration of the permanganate, um, we can determine the concentration of the peroxide. The um, reaction between the iron 2 complex, which is what I'm going to call it, and the permanganate looks like this. So again, we list all species present, and the, the iron 2 complex is highly soluble in water, so we, we show it as free ions. The strongest oxidizer is the acidified permanganate, and the strongest reducer is the iron 2 ion. So, of course, the strongest oxidizer goes to reduction. So I'm showing the, the reduction of the permanganate ion. The strongest uh, reducing agent goes through oxidation, and that's the iron 2 ion. Um, here's the overall redox. And again, the reason we do this work is to determine the stoic ratio between the iron 2 and the permanganate. In this case, it's 5 to 1. Um, your first step in terms of the lab process then is to determine, or is to prepare rather, um, a volume of 0 0.0500 moles per liter of the iron 2 complex. And I'm not going to spell out the procedure here because it's long and elaborate and you have to follow it to a T. So you'll be given a pre lab from your teacher, no doubt, and um, my advice in that regard is to follow that uh, carefully so that you, you get a, a valid result. Uh, and I make that comment here. Procedure is both extensive and precise, so if you're given a pre-lab, follow it carefully. Here's a table, though, that you can use to record your part one results. Um, the volume of the iron, of course, is going to be 10 milliliters per trial, and you're going to get three different results for your volume of permanganate based upon three uh, titration trials, and you're going to uh, get an average volume. And... Um, as seen from the equation, the stoic ratio between the iron uh, 2 ion and the permanganate ion is 5 to 1. So here's the uh, concentration stoichiom stoichiometry for this part of the lab. And it should look it should be very familiar to you in terms of looking like the acid-base calculations you've done in the past. So we have we excuse me. 
just gotta find my mouse. There it is. So 10.0 milliliters of iron complex we used. We have to convert that into liters for our volume. Then we have to multiply by the molar concentration we prepared, which was 0 0.0500 moles per liter of iron 2 complex. So this is C times V for the iron complex, which gives you moles over the iron complex. And we multiply by moles per manganate over moles of iron 2, which we got from the, the balanced redox equation 1 to 5. Then we multiply by 1 over the permanganate ion. 1 over the volume of the permanganate ion, which gives us the molar concentration of the permanganate ion. And that would conclude part 1 of the lab, standardizing the permanganate solution. Once we determine the concentration of the permanganate, the second part of the lab is to titrate it with 10.0 mL aliquots of the peroxide solution. And uh, to determine the redox there then, we follow the same procedure we followed previously. We list all species present. We identify the strongest oxidizer and the strongest reducer. These are the reduction and oxidation half reactions. Of course, the permanganate goes to reduction, the peroxide goes to oxidation, and we flip this equation from the data booklet. We use multipliers to balance the electrons, which looks like this, giving us this overall redox reaction. And the, the stoichiometry between the peroxide and the permanganate is 5 to 2. We can use a table like the following to record our experimental results. And again, the volume of the peroxide is 10.0 milliliter aliquots, and our volume of the uh, permanganate will determine by titrations. Ultimately, we get a, we'll get an average volume for the permanganate. And the stoichiometric calculation to determine the molar concentration of the peroxide then looks like this. We start out with our volume of the permanganate, the average volume, times the molar concentration, which we determined, of course, in part one of this lab. And that those that's C times V, so that'll give us the um, moles of permanganate. And then you multiply by the molar ratio of uh, permanganate to peroxide, which is 5 of the peroxide over 2 of the permanganate. Then we multiply by the volume of the peroxide we employed. Each aliquot was 10.00 milliliters. And to get out of milliliters, we have to multiply by 1,000 milliliters over 1 liter. And that will give us the molar concentration of the permanganate. Just a caution, I think if you record this initial volume of the permanganate, permanganate in milliliters, you're going to need a multiplier there to uh, convert that into liters. Hopefully that's old hat for you in terms of uh, titration calculations. Of course, our final step then is to get out of moles per liter and into percent concentration for the peroxide. And that calculation looks like this. Square brackets means molar concentration in moles per liter. And we multiply by the molar mass of the peroxide over one molar peroxide. Then multiply by the density of the solution, which is one liter over a thousand grams. And um, we're left with moles cancel, liters cancel, and we'll, we're left with grams to grams weight to weight. Times 100, and that'll give you our percentage weight to weight. Of course, any variation away from 3.00% weight to weight is either uh, experimental error uh, or um, the supplier of the peroxide has um, given you uh, or prepared a peroxide solution that's either too dilute or, or too concentrated. That'll be for you to decide in your discussion. So that concludes my uh, lecture on redox titration. Hopefully you find it of some value. We'll see you next time when we talk about corrosion. Thank you.